Good day. Welcome to, once again to our deanery service. Uh, I'm Peter Armstrong. I serve at St. Bryce's Parish. Uh, with us is the preacher, the Venerable Joan Locke. Uh, the reader is the Venerable Linda White. And the music is provided by Mrs. Janet Parfit. Let's worship together. Our Savior Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 2 Timothy 1.10 the peace comes, now is the time to worship. Let us worship. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, I upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. 
serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, come, let us worship. Now we'll have the readings. A reading from the second book of Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lament over Saul and his son, Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jasher. He said, your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Rescue us, O God, for whom we wait, from the depths of depression and despair. May we trust in your mercy, know the fullness of your redemption, and share in the glory of your kingdom, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it 
so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace we cannot measure how you heal. We cannot measure how you heal our answer. Never beats a bird's breath. Yet we believe your grace responds where faith and doubt unite to bear. Your hearts of glory. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone out, gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, 
who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. The woman knowing what had happened to her came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion of people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then they put him, then he put them all outside. He took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to talk, to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know about this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Have you ever been at your wit's end with a situation or circumstance, yearning for resolve, seemingly having exhausted all your resources, desperate to find the answer? Well, that's how the people in our gospel reading today must have been feeling. Jairus is a, po a powerful and influential man. He is the leader of the synagogue at Capernaum. He is upstanding and respected in his community, and no doubt he has servants and messengers to do his bidding. He has just been told that his beloved daughter, who is only 12, is going to die. And there's nothing more the doctors can do for her. The woman with the hemorrhage is, is, because of her illness, a social outcast who must fend for herself. She's been ill for 12 years with no relief from her bleeding, despite having spent all her money on doctors, searching, longing to be healed. In fact, rather than getting better, her situation has become worse. These two, having heard about Jesus and his miracles, approach him in their desperation. We are told Jairus fell at Jesus' feet and begged him repeatedly to come and lay hands on his daughter and heal her. This is hardly the expected behavior of a synagogue leader, especially when the man he's entreating is Jesus of Nazareth, a heretic in the eyes of the devout Jews. The woman comes stealthily through the crowd, keeping her head down lest she be recognized, likely bent or stooped over so as not to be conspicuous, where, according to custom, she dares not tread because of her ritual uncleanness. And then she reaches out and touches the hem of the cloak of a man to whom she is not related. Hardly acceptable behavior of a woman in her situation behavior that could prove dangerous for her. In each of these cases, Jesus engages the person in their desperate plea. In the case of Jairus, Mark records no spoken response by Jesus. He simply goes with this desperate father to the bedside of his dying daughter. With the woman, Jesus, immediately upon having been touched by her, feels power going out and asks, 
who touched me. I can see his disciples shaking their heads and saying, what do you mean who touched you? Who didn't touch you in this crowd? The woman, knowing herself healed, steps forward, falls at Jesus' feet and confesses and tells him her whole story. Jesus responds by calling her daughter and commends her for her faith in coming to him in what were dangerous conditions. He sends her away, filled with peace and healed of her disease. Hardly the acceptable behavior of an upstanding Jew. Now, as they prepare to continue their journey to Jairus's home, some people come from the synagogue leader's house to say the girl has died and that Jairus best not bother Jesus anymore. They get the sense that they think he ought not to have been there in the first place, which may explain why Jairus came to Jesus himself and didn't send the messenger. He couldn't convince anyone else to go out to this heretic looking for help for his daughter. We recall that Jesus overhears them and says gently to Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe, or keep believing. Jesus continues to the house and despite the skepticism of the mourners, commands the girl to get up and she does. Now there are at least two important takeaways from this miracle story. Firstly, although Jesus petitioners were feeling desperate in their respective situations, and that desperation is part of what made them look to Jesus. The other part was faith. Faith that Jesus could and would help them. And that faith gave them hope in their miserable circumstance. In each case, Jesus mentions that faith or belief, <clears throat> um, that faith, pardon me, or belief as a game changer. He tells the woman, your faith has made you well. And to Jairus, do not fear, only believe. We may each from time to time find ourselves at our wit's end and feeling desperate. In fact, if we are without Jesus, we are desperate whether we know it or not. It is our faith in the midst of that desperation that brings us to Jesus' feet that brings us to Jesus for healing. Secondly, we must acknowledge that not every disease and not every illness is healed when we bring it to Jesus. Now, this may seem like a cop out or a disclaimer, but that's not what's intended. While Jesus may not bring the situation to the end that we have planned, the way he did for this woman and this young girl, he does respond when we come to him in faith and come we must. Sometimes physical death is not averted. Sometimes our desperate situation isn't resolved. Sometimes we may even feel like we haven't been heard or that we are being punished or ignored. I repeat, Jesus does respond when we come to him in faith. I have a quote taped to my laptop that's been there for years. In fact, I think this is probably the third computer it's been taped to. It's from C.H. Spurgeon, who was a 19th century American preacher. The quote goes like this, God is too good to be unkind and too wise to be mistaken. So when we cannot follow, trace his hand, we must trust his heart. God is too good to be unkind and too wise to be mistaken. So when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. When we don't see what he is doing, when we sense he is inactive, we can, because we know his past faithfulness to us and to others, trust that he is at work for the best outcome of the situation. And whatever comes, comes out of God's pure love for us. Sometimes we receive and see the response immediately, and others we may never know or see. But the thing we can know 
The thing we can know for certain is that the Lord is at work. There's nowhere that says how much faith we need to have. It's not quantified. It just is. We are simply told to come in faith. Even if coming and falling at Jesus' feet is all we can muster, that's all that's needed. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus said, come to me. The beloved hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus, has wise words for us. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In your desperation, take all of your pain, all of your sin, all of your worries, all of your shame, all of your misgivings, and lay them at the Lord's feet as you fall before him. And hear him name you daughter or son as he listens to your plea and responds in love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Joe. Let us confess together, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray in faith to God our Father and to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For the Church of the Living God throughout the world, especially for the United Church of Pakistan and for the Anglican Churches of Trime, we pray for Bishop Muita. Let us ask the riches of his grace. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all those who proclaim the word of truth, for our church families, for our friends and relatives, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all those who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God, our Metropolitan and, and Bishop, Andermond, our Primate, the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, for all clergy and lay workers within our parishes who play an integral role in the mission and administration of our churches, for their families and friends, and for those struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for Just Justin, our Prime Minister, for Doug, our Premier, and for all who govern the nations, especially President Biden as the people of the United States fight for democracy itself, that they may strive for justice and peace. Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, that their studies may benefit humanity, especially in the area of vaccines for COVID-19 and the various mutations, particularly the Delta variant, for clean energy, for climate change, and our societal issues of reconciliation, discrimination, homelessness, and those who suffer from drug problems. We pray for the Council of the North, for their successful running of the suicide prevention program. Let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, hear mercy. For all first responders, for those who are lonely because of the pandemic, for all those who need help for life's everyday tasks, 
that they accept the help that they need for the hungry, the persecuted, the ignored, and those who are ill in body, mind, and soul. For ourselves, wherever we feel sad, confused, hopeless, despairing, that the Lord may comfort and sustain us. Lord, hear us have mercy. For our missions, especially Camp Temiskaming, for our food banks, let us ask for the continued good health and desire for our volunteers to serve the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. And oh Lord, our hearts break for the 215 children of the residential school in Kamloops and for those of Pawasas whose unmarked graves have been discovered this week. We hear the echoes of the voice in Rama, the voice of weeping and great mourning, the voices of families who, like Rachel, weep for their children and cannot be comforted because those children are no more. Give us your grace and wisdom to know how we can honor these children and reconcile with those who mourn. Lord, hear us. For all those who have passed from this life, especially those from COVID-19 and the First Nations missing women. Let us ask the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. May we love our neighbors ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being, guided and governed us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. In closing peace, great is thy faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of burning with thee. Now change us not, for compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, now forever will be. Great is thy Do you know?
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.